What's up, G-Fusion fans, and welcome to another video, and this is Idol Talk. Now, you may have seen my videos talking about SKE48 and NMB48. Let's actually talk about the group that started it all, AKB48. Well, you probably have seen other uh, AKB48-related videos on this channel, but... I actually haven't introduced uh, the group, you know, in a similar manner as I did with the previous two. And I am actually planning to do the same for the other uh, sister groups that are related to AKB48, but that will come in the future. But today's video is going to be a bit special because as of this recording... AKB48 is celebrating its 15th anniversary. From a small underground idol group with 20 members who were said to have performed in front of only 7 audience members during their first performance to becoming essentially the biggest pop idol group in the world. AKB48 uh, kind of changed the landscape for idol culture in Japan and probably uh, affecting international uh, idol culture as well. So without further ado, let's get on with this video. Now, to start off, uh, you may notice in this channel that uh, mostly when I'm, I make idol talk videos, uh, it's either about AKB48 or the other uh, sister groups that are related to it. And I will admit, I kind of have a bias for AKB48 and its sister groups because it is the first group that really got me into this business anyway. You know? the reason why I'm making this video in the first place. So, uh, if you guys uh, are interested in other groups, you know, that are not related to AKB48 at all, or if you do want me to feature them, uh, you know, uh, please do tell me in the comments which groups uh, you want me to check out and do a video on. But for now, uh, a lot of my videos are going to be concentrated on this very group. So, okay. Uh, so, we're going to start with the history. So, AKB48 made its debut on December 8, 2005. Now, as I mentioned earlier, they were just an independent idol group and, you know, Simply put, they were nobodies back then. However, their producer, their creator, wasn't. Meet Yasushi Akimoto. So, if you don't know him, he is a very famous uh, composer. He wrote a lot of songs for many uh, famous Japanese artists. But uh, he's also a well-known a uh, writer, you know, for screenplays, and he is best known internationally for having written uh, One Missed Call. So he wrote a horror movie, uh, which eventually had an English adaptation. But nonetheless, he is also very much a big name in the music industry. While he isn't a performer himself, he is... Uh, more involved in behind the scenes. So, uh, AKB48 wasn't actually his first project. Now, Yasushi Akimoto created the group Onyanko Club in the 1980s. While it didn't last very long, I think it only lasted about two, three years or something like that, it would nonetheless lay the foundations for what later would become AKB48 almost 20 years later. 
So, Onyanko Club had multiple members. Like, uh, their distinct their distinction is not by name, but actually by number. So, uh, instead of saying, oh, I'm a fan of uh, this idol, that idol, or this member, that member, uh, they would... Uh, fans would be saying, oh, I'm a fan of number one. Oh, I'm a fan of number five. So y- fans would refer to them by name. But uh, however, AKB would not ad- adopt that system. Nonetheless, uh, the big multiple member uh, theme would uh, also come into play uh, later on with AKB. But it uh, made, uh, you know, Onyako Club... Again, d- despite having only been around for a short period of time, was actually very popular. And one of their hit songs, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, Seifuku Nugasanaide. I know it's quite a long title, but Seifuku o Nugasanaide. So that was uh, Onyanko Club's signature song. And AKB48 would perform that. Later on TV, as a tribute to their you know, kind of seniors in a way, but uh, nonetheless, uh, again, uh, for Yasushi Akimoto, it would not be uh, his first time by the time he produced AKB 48. So, his idea summed up in one phrase is that idols you can meet. I may have mentioned this already uh, in uh, my SKE or NMB48 introduction videos, but it all starts here with AKB. So that was his idea. That was Yasushi Akimoto's idea. So what makes uh, AKB48 uh, stand out from every other performing artist is that they have their own theater. So if we think of other uh, performing artists like singers or even other idol groups, you know, you would probably just, uh, you know, see them on TV. If you want to watch them live, you would have to go to their concerts, but uh, they don't always offer that chance they only appear on tv when uh like let's say for example they're promoting a new single or album and uh you know concerts would be held whenever they're also promoting a new album but akb48 isn't really that kind of group well They technically do all that stuff as well, you know, appearing on TV, uh, having their own concerts. Having their own theater made them unique. So, the purpose of the theater is that uh, this is where the members would perform on a regular basis, like almost every day. So, AKB48 Theater is located in Akihabara, Tokyo. And of course, Akihabara is also known as Akiba for short, therefore AKB. So, AKB48, as I mentioned earlier, started with 20 members. Now, here is one thing that a lot of people who uh, talk about AKB get wrong. And these people haven't looked into the history of the group that much Uh, when they do this. So the 48 in AKB48 actually uh, comes from the name of one of Yasushi Akimoto's business partners when he created the group. So uh, I forgot his first name, but his family name was Shiba. So she can be written as number four and Ba can be written as number eight. So Ha, Hachi, Ba. So Yeah, Japanese is weird, I know. But nonetheless, uh, that is the story. So it is a misconception that AKB48 gets the 48 because of the number of members that perform. No. Like I said, they started with 20 members on their debut and would eventually grow 
to be much bigger than just 48 members. As of this date, I think there are about 100 members or so in the group. Yeah, about twice than that of 48. That I can tell you. <laughs> but so, like I've said, uh, their job or their duty is to perform for our fans. And uh, as the group grew in number, so with the the small capacity of the theater, of course, with the 250 people, uh, the stage would also be, have to be relatively small. And you probably wouldn't even fit all of the performing members if you put them all on the stage. So what happened is that uh, members were divided into three teams initially. So we have A, K, and B. Each team stands for uh, the acronyms of A, K, B. So of course, uh, we have team A, team K, and B, which, you know, teams have uh, their own distinct characteristics. So for Team A, the songs they perform would be, you know, well-balanced. Uh, I would say they have a wide variety of songs like ballads, uh, like cute songs, and stuff like that. Team K has a lot of high energy, like uh, high upbeat uh songs uh a lot, also a lot of like performance heavy songs i guess and they do have like mature and somewhat sensual songs as well and team b uh has a very distinct the uh, cutesiness to it so like they're the cutest among the bunch but Nonetheless, uh, some songs would kind of inter uh, like overlap, like Team B and Team A, for example, would have something cute, uh, or Team Team B would have something mature, and uh, Team K, well, they would have something like a ballad or something. But yeah, uh, each team has their distinct uh, flavor, if you might say, but. Uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, that's what they do. So teams would perform on a rotation basis. Let's say, for example, today, uh, Team A would perform, and then tomorrow, Team K, and then on the next day would be Team B. So that's been their system for their early years. Now, eventually, in around 2010 or 2011, so Team 4 would eventually be added. So, Team 4 is composed of members that have joined from the ninth batch or generation, as they call it, ninth generation of members to the 12th generation. So, members are added normally uh, every six months or so, but uh, since uh, the group grew too big, it uh, like after that, they kind of lengthen the gap of members joining let's say the 15th generation uh, joined in around uh, 2013 and then almost three years later so uh, the 16th generation joined so uh, they joined in around 2016 so imagine that from every six months and then they lengthened it to three years. But yeah, that's been the audition process. But nonetheless, uh, the group uh, grew in number. So they had to slow down, of course. But yeah, uh, that's how it is. So basically, before the ninth generation came in, before Team 4 was created, so each uh, batch would be uh, like, they were divided into uh, groups, so like you would I either join uh, team A, K, and B, and if you aren't promoted yet from a trainee status, so you would still perform as a trainee. Uh, you either perform on your own stage, uh, you 
like the trainees may perform as a group or they serve as like unders for any of the other teams. Let's say for team A's performance, like one member is absent, then an understudy or a trainee would fill in for her. So that's uh, what happens. So team four was eventually created. So a bunch of trainees suddenly got promoted and they suddenly have their own team. But, uh, you know, that that's good for them. So up until that point, uh, AKB48 had four teams. And by 2014, they would eventually add team eight. Now, team eight, I would say uh, I actually could make a separate video uh, about them because they're very unique. So for the team system, uh, each team would have about 16 to 25 members at an average, but team eight is different. So it has 47 members, each representing a prefecture of Japan because that is their uh, theme. So Team 8 is very special because they're, uh, they actually kind of flipped the idea of idols you can meet on its head by turning themselves into idols that meet you. So uh, again, uh, that's, go that's going to be a long video. So I guess uh, Team 8, uh, that's, all, that's all that I'm going to say about Team 8 for now. But nonetheless, uh, we have five teams already. And up until now, only AKB48 has the complete five-team system. So for all the other sister groups that exist right now, they have uh, three teams. SK48 has three teams. NMB48 also has three teams. HKT48 also has three three teams. Uh, we're not including the trainees or understudies yet. Now, STU48 and NGT48, they don't follow this system. So, um, that's kind of difficult to talk about. But uh, anyways, these groups will get their own separate videos. So, we'll talk about them much later. But yeah, so far only AKB48 has five teams. So for their performances, like uh, like I've said, uh, they they perform in a theater. So how do the theater performances go? So you have uh, songs which involve all the members performing. So let's say uh, for tonight's Team A stage, uh, all of the members are set to appear. And then they would start off by singing maybe two or three songs as a, a as an entire team, and then after that uh, you would switch to a talk segment. So while a few members remain on stage, the rest rush back to the backstage and get changed and get ready for the next song. So there would be unit songs where. Only a few select members uh, perform a different song, uh, you know, depending on the number of members. So, like, uh, this unit has five members, the next unit has four, the next unit has two, or something like that. You also have, like, solo songs sometimes. But that was their system. So, like, you have the whole team performing and then switching to a smaller unit which gives the other members the opportunity to go back to... Uh, into the backstage, change, get ready for the next song. So it's actually a genius strategy. So uh, yeah, that's basically how it goes. And, uh, you know, other than uh, performing in their theater, so one thing that uh, AKB48, I think, capitalized on is the opportunity to meet members. Of course, with their theater, you can basically do that. If you go there regularly, you can watch them live on stage, very up close. But 
like events that I've posted here actually. So you're actually given an opportunity to talk to your favorite members. You basically buy their CDs, which have the ticket for a specific event. You go to that event and talk to your favorite members. So again, I have made a few videos about that. Uh, you may want to check them out on the Idol Talk playlist uh, here on J Fusion channel. But yeah, imagine that. So AKB48 has hundreds of members and fans also buy hundreds of CDs just to meet their favorite members. And again, this is where the actual cash comes in. Rather than just, you know, uh, having people... Uh, watch uh, every day, you know, in the theater. They do spend a lot more on the events. So that's basically AKB48 system. But yeah, you know, like I've said earlier, other performing artists just you know, appear on TV uh, and in concerts whenever they have the opportunity to do so. But AKB48 made that opportunity for the fans. Like, they themselves make the opportunity to see their fans in person. So, you know, even if uh, there are a lot of groups right now that basically have surpassed AKB48 in popularity... The group still remains highly relevant. They're still up there. And let's say, for example, even if AKB48 were to disband the next day, I'm sure they're not. They, they do have a lot of things planned for the future. And uh, I could see them going another 10, 15 years or so. You know, like even if, let's say, just for hypothesis sake, you know, if they were to disband tomorrow, the mark that they left on the music industry in Japan, how they've impacted idol culture, not only in Japan, but internationally, because there are international fans of AKB48, I tell you. They would still be remembered for a very long time. Like, they're practically in history books. Well, not really, but, you know, they made history. That's the point. So, you know, while, again, they their popularity may eventually fade out, but definitely they're not going to be obscure in the near future. So, I will still keep uh, supporting them. And yeah, no. So getting into the personal part here. Like I've said earlier, AKB48, uh, you know, kind of became my gateway into the idol culture. And uh, honestly, you know, like two years ago, I almost. So I made a video about Dan. You know, uh, if you guys are new here, Dan was the creator of J Fusion. So, you know, it became a way for us to get closer. Of course, we do share like other hobbies, like uh, we do talk about Super Sentai Kamen Rider anime a lot. But what really got us together and what allowed us to make more friends was idols and AKB48 helped us achieve that. So this is why I do have a huge bias towards this group and every other group related to them. And uh, as long as I can support the group, I will. I will do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I know this isn't this isn't really an exact uh, introduction to AKB48, but 
I hope I have given you guys an idea of what the group is. And uh, yeah, uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. So please leave a like, comment, subscribe, uh, share this video, and hit that notification bell so you get the latest from JE Fusion. This has been Philip, and I'll see you on the next Idol Talk. I will be making more of these in the future, definitely. I do have many videos planned. <laughs> so anyways, see you again.